organization should be supported. He was strongly impressed by Westmoreland's concept of providing security of two kinds. A, security of the country as a whole from large, well-organized forces. B, security from the guerrilla, the assassin, the terrorist, the sneak, the night rider, the informer. He agreed with Westmoreland's view that U.S. troops can contribute to the former, but only the Vietnamese can finally succeed with the latter. I went into detail in the possible use of the force of B-52s against the target area where Viet Cong forces are located and where they are based and housed in South Vietnam. In response to his question, I told him there were no friendly people within seven kilometers of this target. He then stated that he definitely wanted to support operations of this kind and he thought the first one should be carried out immediately or at least as soon as practical. Next, I reviewed the patterns of recent operations in North Vietnam. The general asked whether we are assured against inflated damage estimates. I described the bomb damage assessment and comment commented on targets such as bridges and ammunition and dumps. I point out the targets on the list which should get across to the DRV the idea that there are no sanctuaries or there are no arbitrary restrictions against working our way further north. He had no specific comment on the bombing program. Well, you know, we got up there pretty close last night before the MiGs came out and intercepted us and we knocked two of them out. I read off briefly the 13 various steps that the United States government had taken to try to reach reasonable, peaceful solutions in Southeast Asia. He indicated he was aware of the strong case that our State Department had made in this regard, and he thought the paper should be published immediately. Recent history of the United States negotiating efforts in Southeast Asia, dated June 10th, should be published, he thought, by, as a white paper. I reviewed the state of affairs of the Dominican Republic, mentioning the Ambassador Bunker and his colleagues on the OAS, and the idea would have to be a broadly based government. I covered the outbreak of conflict between the rebels and our airborne forces yesterday and how they had fired first, and we responded 23 minutes later. He was gratified at the firm action that was being taken by the Brazilian General, General Alvey. The General Eisenhower inquired the possibility of removing more of our forces and asked when it would be done. I told him the president had moved it from 21,000 down to 14, and the planning had already done, and the hope would remove two more battalions soon as Al Beam would release them. I mentioned the possibility that the Brazilian might furnish another battalion. He indicated he thought this would be an excellent opportunity. I asked him if, uh, according to President Johnson, if he would let Milton ask Milton to go on a trip to South America. He picked up the phone and called Milton, and Milton told him that he did not feel it would be wise to take the task he had such a schedule and such a hard load of work at the commencement time. Finally, I told the general, the president reiterated he'd like to see him from time to time, talk about matters of prosecuting these problems, and he suggested the possibility if I was to be in Washington the next two or three weeks, he'd like to get together. A few military people, such as the Joint Chiefs of Staff and others, General Eisenhower indicated his next visit to Washington would be on the 28th of this month. He indicated agreement as the idea of discussion President said he would welcome them. He'd be glad to include a lunch or a small dinner, such as the President suggested any time. There it is. Uh, Mr. President, now, first let me say I agree exactly with what you did with the 52. And I certainly will prefer General Eisenhower what he said in this report from General Goodbye. And as uh, far as I'm concerned, I will. I know that, and I'm proud of you, and I, I, your country's proud of you. And the only thing I regret is that you're going to pick up some Republican seats as a result of that kind of forward-looking policy. And I, I won't be happy with that unless they like you. And uh, if they like you, I won't object. But I think you ought to get a muzzler on Laird and make him put, telling me that I can't have ground troops to even protect my own airplanes because I can't bomb like he wants to if the goddamn uh, uh, Viet Cong are destroying my airplanes on the ground. Uh, we tried to do some talking to keep uh, our comments within proper bounds, and I am not surprised that this would be done. Would you consider letting me trade the uh, Morris to you for Laird? <laughs> Take care of your boy, and I'm sorry to bother you, Jerry. Okay, Mr. Mr. Tom Dewey won't say hi to you. He's uh, sitting in here trying to get my tail out of a crack. Well, I had to get a good lawyer, and uh, if you get get enough danger, and want the right kind of doctor, you'll even take a Republican.
Go, go to the Republicans first, don't you, Jerry? That's right, Tom. All right. Fine, Let's talk with you. We'll write to talk to you and uh, to you down there and uh, to the president. Right. Hope I'll see you soon. All right. Fine, Tom. Bye. Bye. Jerry. Good night, Mr. President. Bye.